Yes, we're live. So welcome to another update from the Liberators. We're starting our new sprint today. And contrary to what we normally do, we're not outside because, well, you, well, you probably can't see it, <laughs> but it's uh, it's raining and dreary and dark. It sounds a bit uh, weak, Chris. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, 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 it's raining. So no, we're not going to walk in the rain. <laughs> Well, Barry didn't want to walk in the rain. No. <laughs> uh, so we're doing it inside today. Um, let's first take a look at all the things we've done in the last sprint. I think we had a pretty successful one. Barry, what is your biggest takeaway from what we delivered in terms of features? And well, um, I think the categorizing is what I remember the most from last sprint. I'm not sure if that's a good signal because it was quite a lot of boring work, but it's what it was like to categorize all the content that we created so that um, for the zombie scrum survey, when you take the zombie scrum server with your team, chances are you get um, other uh, more relevant content as a, as a result. Um, and we put a lot of something completely different, but we put a lot of time in uh, working with the community. Uh, we did a session for the European Space Agency, which was quite cool. We uh, had a very fun meetup with the Polish uh, community. And let's see. Oh, yeah. And we did a, a keynote for a Scrum Day Barcelona with Alex Ballerin, also one of our patrons, which was uh, very well organized. It was a lot of fun to uh, participate in that one as well. Um, so quite a lot of time and focus went on uh, doing these sessions with the community. And for me personally, helping uh, out with uh, well, uh, putting more content into the Zombie Scrum survey. Yeah, because that was the goal for the previous sprint, right? That we wanted to make the goal that we're working towards, the product goal that we're working towards at the moment is to basically revamp or retool the Zombie Scrum survey to make it easier for Scrum teams all over the world to support their continuous improvement with the profiles that we generate with our tool. Mm -hmm. And um, as part of that, we want to make it easier for Scrum teams to find content that helps them in overcoming the impediments that they can identify with our survey. And we already have a lot of content in our archive. We have a lot of podcasts, blog posts, videos, exercises, strings. Um, and up till last sprint, we manually added some of those recommendations in your profile, but now we've actually exposed the whole catalog of all the content that we have. That's what we categorized, what Barry just said. Um, and uh, we also made it, we, we're basically making these recommendations now in your profile. So that's a really big update um, that I think makes the survey a lot more relevant and the content that it suggests a lot more relevant. And we'll be working on it further in the coming weeks to, to make it even easier and simpler. So if you have feedback on this and you're trying it out this sprint, let us know what you think. We're very interested to hear your thoughts. Yep. So we also did a short sprint retrospective based on last week. Barry, what was your takeaway? Is there something that jumped to mind from our conversation that, that would be nice for the viewers? Uh, good question. Uh, silence. <laughs> I think one thing we talked about is that it's a, it's a, it's a recurring theme is that the Friday sometimes tends to be very stressful mm. because we have this spring goal that we set at the start of the sprint. And um, for some reason, it's still stressful sometimes on Friday, even though we release continuously throughout the sprint. So for example, in the previous sprint, we've actually done, I, I remember correctly, five releases before Friday, but still Friday was stressful. So we talked a bit about what causes that stress. And in part, I think that that's something that every scrum team out there who develop software will recognize that all this sometimes the writing of the software is not the problem but all the work around it like all the automated tests the making sure that that's all up up to date that's where a lot of time goes into and it's usually also where you find a lot of unexpected work and i think in part that happened on friday mm -hmm. um even though come think of it we actually do write all the automated tests throughout the week so in this case, I think the goal was a bit too ambitious and 
I think one solution that we talked about is that we used to, the Thursday to sort of reorient are we to ourselves towards the goal. So what else is absolutely necessary in the spring backlog to achieve the spring goal? And I think last spring, we just kept adding more stuff because we were so excited about the goal, but we probably could have left out a lot of that. Yeah, but I think it's, we've also learned that um, having the sprint goal is very important because we do notice that there's a lot of movement going on in the sprint backlog itself. But we can, because we do have a sprint goal, we can make these, we can already make these decisions for ourselves. Like, okay, I'm just going to remove this from the, the sprint backlog back to the product backlog because we've learned that probably it's not going to happen um, during this sprint, but it doesn't impact the sprint goal. So we can just, without even discussing it with each other, move it back to the, to the product backlog. I think if we wouldn't have had a sprint goal, then it would have been much more difficult to make those decisions. I'm just remembering something that might be helpful too, that we didn't talk about, but it's maybe a suggestion is purely in development work. What I always find tricky is that as a developer, you're trying to create something that's of high quality, but sometimes the quality is a bit too high. So mm -hmm. you're sort of, bullets proofing your code for a nuclear war <laughs> when you don't have a nuclear war and it's not going to happen anytime soon or the zombie apocalypse um, and I think that that's a potential pitfall so maybe Barry you can now in the next sprint say let's do a timeout and mm. that, that's maybe the idea that we can use on Thursday yeah, I like that. sprint let's do a timeout reorient ourselves is this still necessary absolutely necessary or can we do it later because mm -hmm. that's one of those things that's always hard for me personally i want all the code i write i want it to be perfect but perfection is is a big issue it's, it makes it very hard to deliver anything um so maybe we can you can help me yeah by yeah. being a bit less focused on perfection and just getting it out the door it's interesting but, why um, but you because you, well, it's personal, but you do get more grumpy <laughs> <laughs> when yeah. you are in this mode like this. So I see so much work that's, that, that, that can be done to make it better, to, to improve it. And so you get less approachable. <laughs> <laughs> As you are, uh, I've ever yeah, worked with can testify. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a good one. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. yeah, but the reason for that is because I, I know how, I, I sort of see the gap. The gap becomes clearer between what makes perfect code and what we actually have. And that makes me a bit grumpy because I want to make sure that it's perfect. So that sort of perfection game, even though it's very important and I always recommend all developers to do this, what can you do to make it better? It can also get in the way because <laughs> if you're a bit too disciplined, then it can also be very tricky. So cool. Let's give it a try. You can do a timeout, okay? <laughs> if I'm if I'm becoming grumpy, you can do a timeout. Yeah, we've we've got this recording, so I'm going to do the show. <laughs> so, what do we need to discuss for the upcoming week? I think we already shared, talked a bit about. So, what's going to be our focus for the upcoming period? Do we want to make it more specific for this week? Yeah, I would love to, um, because I think that the goal that we have for the coming sprint is very much about empiricism. Um, because we've already spoken to several users of the survey, we've gathered metrics, we've received feedback, we can see that over the past two weeks, 150 teams participated in the survey and actually completed it, which is a really good number and a significant growth. Um, but still, I think we're making quite a lot of assumptions about where we are going with this product and what's necessary. So I would love to add a few more ways for Barry and me to create transparency around how useful is it really. Um, and I think we identified some work for, for that. Mm -hmm. If you want to do that, if you want to talk about that, Barry, go ahead, by the way. Well, I think it's quite straightforward. What we're going to do is also reach out to a couple of uh, users that have tried the zombie uh, scrum survey recently um, and to just well interview them and see based on their findings for us to see if we are on the right track because we've noticed that chris and i have quite a lot of conversations about new functionality in a direction where we can go but it, 
pitfall could be that it's completely different from what is really valuable for the people that have used the survey. So maybe based on their feedback, we should focus on entirely different things. Um, and I also noticed a tendency within myself to well have these cliche questions like, yeah, but how do they serve? How do they, how can they know what is valuable and they don't know what's on their on our backlog? Well, we like, know better what our users need. <laughs> what the users? Yeah, need. I have this tendency like, yeah, <laughs> how can they know? But I think that's a good one. And also to not what we are going to do is organize a sprint review for that that all patrons get attend somewhere next week. Um, we're going to schedule that for somewhere next week. Uh, but also just to uh, reach out just in between, uh, just on more on a daily basis to uh, to uh, just have a one-on-one -on -one interview with uh, people that used it and see uh, what, yeah. what their experience with the survey is. Yeah, we already have a couple of people who offer to, to be available for that. If you're watching this um, and you're interested in doing that too, um, Barry or I are happy to talk with you for 20 minutes or something. Mm. Just to keep it short so that your investment is not too much in terms of time. Um, but that can really help us determine what else is necessary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and what we're going to work on is we've got so much content that we can share that a pitfall could be that um, um, you're going to be overwhelmed with uh, recommendations and, and, and feedback. So we need to find a way to offer you the right content, but also offer it in such a way that it's helpful, that it doesn't scare you away, that you're just gonna close down the survey and run away, but it's, uh, that it's shown in a way that it's helpful for you and, and um, yeah, that you can really immediately start applying it as well. Uh, because we're, right now we are, we are showing blog posts, videos, workshops, uh, products from our web shop. It's just a, a, mix, a mix of different types of things that we are giving you uh, as a result. So we're also, also looking for feedback on that, on what is a way, what is the best way to, to visualize it, to show it. And we also have a lot of other small stuff that we need to do, some administrative stuff. We have a lot of work surrounding the book, which is officially available in Europe this week. So we're actually going to start sending out all the pre-orders. That's just going to take some time. Um, so I think in terms of the spring goal, we can probably work on that for two or three days. And yep. the rest of the week, we have to work on some other things, which is just sometimes the case. Um, but still helpful to have a spring goal. And right now, you are only seeing one more meetup on uh, as part of the Liberators Network. We are going to schedule more meetups next year. But that's also something for this week to discuss with each other. So what's, what's the rhythm that we are going to use for next year? And what types of meetups are we going to schedule? So stay tuned for that one as well. I think and for spring planning. Yeah. Yeah. But have we already covered that? I think it's already quite a long video. So I'm not yeah, sure I got one more on. thing. So, ah. um, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to show this one. Yeah. So, um, uh, for the people that are not from the Netherlands, we actually celebrated something called Sinterklaas last week uh, last weekend, which is, um, a Dutch holiday where Sinterklaas or, Santa Claus in the United States, they actually borrowed Sinterklaas uh, for Christmas. Um, well, the idea is that uh, Sinterklaas gives gifts to children and the adults, usually, I'm not sure Barry, if you do this too in your family, but yeah. the adults, they give each other gold you know, surprises. Um, and it's, it's basically arts and crafts work where people make, a, make something for each other, put a gift in it, and it's usually intended as a joke or some reflection on the last year. Um, and my sister-in-law made this, um, well, Zoom, <laughs> Zoom uh, room, as you can see. I'm looking very grumpy in there. I didn't see Barry in there, but she probably didn't know that, <laughs> that, that I work with Barry because that was one of the jokes she wrote in her, you always write a poem for each other as well, or usually. And in the poem, she said something like, I have no idea what it is that you do. <laughs> I, I see some screenshots coming see, on, on LinkedIn every now and then about Zoom. So that's it. But that was fun. And I think it's hilarious to, to see that people are picking up on the Zoom. And, and that, that's what we're doing. What did you get, Barry? Did you also get something? No, no. For us, the focus was uh, we're, we're, we are doing that, like creating this uh, these types of gifts, but it's more like uh, we do a uh, we do it for Christmas. So 
Santa Claus, it's not Santa Claus, Santa Claus <laughs> is more focused in our family on the, on the children. Uh, and then doing it like this, uh, with a poem, etc. that's more that we do with Santa Claus. But you did mention that there was a switch. <laughs> a switch? You did oh, a switch. yeah, 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 yeah. But that's yeah. still a sort of a gift for the kids, <laughs> also for dad. <laughs> yeah, so I gave my children <laughs> a Nintendo Switch as a uh, gift for all of them. But I'm quite happy with it myself. <laughs> that's so, great. Okay. That's it for now. It was quite a long video. Thank you for watching. If you actually stayed with us until the end, we'll be here again next week with another video to recap our current sprint and start the next one. Thank you for watching. Cool. Take care. Bye bye.